One of the traits that both Ajahn Sawat and Ajahn Fuang had in common was they were very solid, unexcitable. Good things would happen, bad things would happen, and they seemed undisturbed. Didn't get excited about the good things, didn't get upset about the bad things. We're able to maintain a very even keel. And this is a quality that's very much lacking, especially here in America. People are very excitable. They react to the slightest thing overreact to the slightest thing. Maybe it's because of the influence of TV. Maybe it's simply because they don't take the long view. This quality of equanimity and having this even keel depends on several other qualities, which are really worth developing. One is just that. You're Ability to take the long view on things. Realize, for example, in your practice there are going to be ups and there are going to be downs, and there are going to be ups again and downs again. And it doesn't accomplish anything to get excited about them. And so when you can gain that perspective, it helps you to negotiate the ups and downs. and to develop qualities of endurance. This is another important quality in equanimity. Endurance, patience, the ability simply to sit with things. When you begin to realize that even though there are ups and downs, there's a part of the mind that's not affected by them. And a large part of the practice is getting acquainted with that part of the mind, being in touch with it taking that as your dwelling place. Simply the part of the mind that's aware, but doesn't have to react. There are times when I've wondered if that famous koan about the sound of one hand clapping is precisely about this issue, the mind that doesn't react. Sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations come, ideas come, mental states come. And they clap up against the mind. And the normal mind would just clap right back, liking and disliking them, reacting this way, reacting that way. But we're after is the mind that doesn't clap back, the mind that simply knows, it's simply aware. Oh, there's that. And you want to get in touch with that part of the mind. and value it as well. Again, this is where the, your perspective comes in, your discernment comes in. When you realize what, when things happen, you can't always tell right away what their long-term out, outcome is going to be. And so before you pass judgment, you want to watch. and watch again and watch again until you're really sure. So many times in the meditation we come up with our theories that this has to be this way, that has to be that way, and then a few days later you have to throw those theories away and try new ones. And then there comes a point where you realize that your theories are like post-it notes. You put them on for a while and then see if they're going to stick. And then if they don't really stick, well, you can peel them off. And because they're post-it notes, they're just that, nothing you really want to allow yourself to react to, because you don't know whether they're true or not. It's just an idea, just a little note to yourself. But whether the note is true or not, you want to watch it further. And this requires a certain amount of skepticism, and that old saying, don't believe everything you think. It really holds in the meditation. A thought will come and you want to watch it, both the thing that it's thinking about and the thought in and of itself. 
put a little question mark. And John Lee once said one way of testing your insights is to turn them inside out. Suppose that the exact opposite of that insight were true. Or how about turning it in and out, inside out even further? Suppose that neither the, the original insight nor its opposite is true. Is there a third alternative? This requires, of course, your willingness to, to watch, to realize that this is a long-term process we're involved in as we meditate. And so you can't jump to any immediate conclusions. Some things, of course, will be perfectly obvious, but even then you have to ask, well, suppose it's just the opposite. What are the exceptions? What are the assumptions? Sometimes this is explained as a willingness to say, well, it's not yet sure, so let's watch. That doesn't mean you're uncertain about everything, it's just that you realize that before you really want to be certain and sure about something, you want to test it over and over again. Watch it over and over again. And when you get that element of skepticism in your practice, it doesn't mean that you don't believe in it, it's just that you want to make sure. And you see the areas where it's not sure, the possibility that what you think 100% well may not be 100%, maybe it's only 80% right. So when you combine the, the ability to look at things over the long term with this quality of patience, endurance, you find it a lot easier to keep your mind on an even keel. And you begin to see in the meditation, almost every cloud has a silver lining, almost every silver lining has a cloud. Don't be a person with one eye. Be a person like the old epithet for the Buddha, who is an all-around eye, seeing in all directions. ready to admit all kinds of possibilities. That's the kind of I, that's the kind of state of mind that develops that quality of solidity, Develop, becomes a mind that you can trust. And when the mind becomes a mind you can trust, then whatever comes up in the meditation holds fewer and fewer dangers because you're less likely to jump at things. Because after all, what is your guarantee in the meditation? You get a particular result in the meditation, you go run into your teacher. How do you know that the teacher knows? You go looking at the text. How do you know that the texts really report what the Buddha had to say? Your only mainstay is your own honesty. And honesty is this ability to wait and see, not jump to conclusions, not simply run after what you think you want. And what happens as a result is ultimately the meditation leads to a point where you get more than you wanted. The results of the meditation really do excel anything that you could imagine. But it requires this quality of truthfulness, honesty. Endurance. It all comes down to this mind that's willing to watch and watch again, just to make sure.